recording. Welcome to Arise and Shine with Jeanette and Sandy. Yay! Hey. Today, <laughs> bum, 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 uh -huh. we're moving a whole two furses down <laughs> yep, yep. From, where, from where we were. <laughs> so we are on Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. On the series of laying up your treasures in heaven. This is the third part of our series. Um, so today, let's go ahead and start and read the verse together. So um, it says, No one can serve two masters, for mm -hmm. either he will hate, hate the one, one and love the other, other. Or, or else he will be loyal to the one and the, despise the other. And despise the other, yeah. Mm -hmm. You cannot serve both God and money. Yep. Or mammon. Or mammon. Mm -hmm. So. Alrighty. So um, I wanted to kind of start it off with uh, that. There's nothing more obvious than that verse. So it means what it means, actually. And that's a very convicting verse. Um, even when I first became a Christian and when I first saw that, I remember thinking, wow, okay. Um, so, but we're going to attempt to break this up today. Yeah. So we, you can either think of it in many different forms, meaning we're going to take the side of God and riches today, but honestly, um, I'm going to talk about the parable of the talents, but, um, Jeanette's going to take another, um, you know, are you serving God? Are you serving the devil? Who are you serving? Um, yep. Yeah, basically, who are you serving? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Who is it you're serving? So, and who is it you're serving can be anything. That's what we're trying to say here. So um, I wanted to go a little bit back further than that, is that, um, let's go back to the kind of like the creation, right? Back in Genesis, when God made, made the expanse of the water above and below, when he made um, the sun, the moon, the stars, you know, everything, when I was talking to our pastor of our church, everything he ever made was with distinction. And, um, and right down to man, he made man, he made woman, um, and he made us to be in fellowship with him. However, when God sinned, this is what we talk about, you know, Adam we have, sinned. yes, when Adam <laughs> sinned, I'm sorry, did I say God sinned? <laughs> I did, sorry, that was on my brain. Anyway, um, thank you for catching me. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes, so when man sinned, when Adam sinned, um, that created that separation, that eternal separation. So basically now man was cursed, we have this eternal separation. But what does that actually mean? Because I know you guys have all heard that. Eternal separation, for those of you that have never heard that, it simply, it can mean, you know, if you've ever heard we have a hole, we're all born with a hole in our heart, um, that's that separation. They, Adam and Eve did not have that when they were originally created by man before their fall so but after their fall this hole in their heart became apparent because God no longer was the center of their of their life basically so now and so what I was talking about about the creation about God making all these wonderful things for them and food for them and and trees and you know um, the earth and everything good that came out of it God created those good things for us to enjoy originally you know but with him as the center of our life so after the fall of man um, no longer now these things that God made good for us to enjoy for our benefits now man started to fight and steal and cheat and start to possess these things to be able to put some of these things perhaps in their heart oh. to fill that void so we can think that of whole that Cain way. and Abel thing where mm -hmm. he got jealous because his, his uh, brother's uh, mm -hmm. offering was better than his. Oh, light bulb moment. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this is good. Good so, job, Sandy. What else? Anyway, <laughs> tell, me, tell me more. Well, not too much more, but yeah, that's so I, because I, I never really understood when somebody told me when I first became a Christian, you know, everybody's born with a hole in their heart. And I thought, okay, we're just born with holes in our hearts, with, which we kind of, you know, are not physically, but Anyway, actually, some people are born with a hole in their hearts, but we're not talking about that. Um, the, the, the medical This is the empty, of it. empty void, this empty yeah, spot the that empty needs void, to be filled. empty space. The spiritual is what we're right. talking about. So um, I, yeah, it was a light bulb moment for me that that's 
that to me that that's what that meant so anyway um good way to think about that i want to go over so food for thought let's go over the parable of the talents which is found in matthew 25 chapter um, chapter 25 verses starting from um, 14 okay so for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them and to one he gave five talents to another he gave two to another he gave one to each according to his own ability let's stop there for a second and then the owner went away right he traveled to a far country that by actually you guys is god right god is coming back for us and he's left us with he's put us in charge of things actually so um but to one he gave five talents to another two and to another one what is that speaking of that's speaking of to what he gave you in your life to your lot in life mm -hmm. to be happy with what you have mm -hmm. but don't just sit on it and then to one to each according to his own ability so Jeanette and I were talking before this and she was saying because that person who was given five could actually handle five they knew what to do with it. They probably were more responsible, definitely were more responsible than the one he gave one talent to. So if you've read that whole, I'm not gonna re read the whole thing, but basically the one that was given the five talents went and doubled it, okay? And so did the one that was given two talents. He went and doubled it. But the one that was given one talent was a little bit shrewd and, and was a lot shrewd and didn't do anything with it. So you guys, talents is just another name for whatever you've been given in life. We can speak on the physical level of what you've been given in life. And we can also speak on the spiritual level of what you've been given in life, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, so when the owner came back, you know, uh, they all ran up to him at their own times. And the one with the five said, look, look, basically look at what I did. And I doubled this. And so, you know, he was like, well done, good and faithful servant, you know, and turned to the kingdom. And same thing with the one with two. But the one with one, well, he had a good saying. What did he say? He said, um, he said, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. He so, just gave back what he was given. Yeah, gave back what he was given. But I, I think the key, you know, with today's times is that, and I was afraid. Mm -hmm. So fear driven, fear driven can stop us from doing things we should be want to be doing should be doing god's calling us to do you know your um, purpose your purpose so but his lord answered and said to him and he's thinking he was doing a good thing you know but he wasn't so the lord said so his lord said you wicked and lazy servant you knew that i reap where i have not sown and gather where i have not scattered seed so you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming i would have received back my own plus interest with my with interest therefore take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents for to everyone who has more will be given and he will have abundance but from he who does not have even what he has will be taken away and and then listen to this so it's like are we talking about money anymore and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What does that sound like? That sounds like the unbeliever, mm -hmm. the, the person who rejected God. Yep. So we're really not talking about money there anymore. So I don't believe that the parable of talents is only about money because of this. Mm -hmm. Like you're not gonna get thrown into hell because of money. So obviously this is a spiritual thing right. here. So it was like, here, I'm giving you this free gift of the savior of my son. Yes. And he goes, you can yeah. have it back. Right. So he's right. rejecting that. Yeah. Wow. I never, uh, yeah. another light bulb. Yeah. Wow. And basically so having an unfruitful life if you don't believe in God and, mm -hmm. and do his, do his will. So yeah, that's what I got from that. That's huge. Um, 
huge. How many minutes do I have left? You oh, have. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I think that's what I wanted to say to you guys about nice. that because it's pretty plain and clear. You can kind of get what you want from from the verse that we're going over this week. But basically, it does come down to the conviction of: Do we own our Do we own our possessions, or does it own us? Um, you know, again, nothing can be said more clearly. You know, and that and going to preface now, what Jeanette's going to talk about, that we are not called actually to relinquish the things that we've been given, not everything. You know, again, we've gone it over it before, trying to sum up what we've been saying over the last three weeks, is that God allows us to have possessions. In fact, he blesses us mm -hmm. with possessions. The Bible's rife with that, um, about evidence of that, you know, about do not steal, you know, do not covet. Do not covet what? Because people have possessions, you know. But we're talking about being a society of things, being, uh, you know, letting those possessions overpower you mm -hmm. and consume your thoughts and your, what, you know, because if you have things, you have to take care of those things, right? You have beautiful cars and you have to think about, man, I'm going to go wash that one today. And change then next the oil. Week I'm going to change the oil. And then, you know, I've got all these things in my house and I got to go shine those things and up. Them up. <laughs> and And <laughs> so I heard it uh, or I read it somewhere that if you know your, your neighborhood supermarket or your favorite place to hang out and its logistics more than you know the New Testament or the Bible itself, then there's a problem there. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. You need to spend more time knowing how to navigate yourself around the word of God than you do your local hangout basically so mm. um, so anyway not calling to relinquish everything you have some people are though some people want to do that there have been there are people that tithe 50 percent of their income I don't know how I couldn't live but you know that's not me but some people have been blessed that much that they can do that but we don't all have to do that you know right. Um, and we're not all called to do that. And, 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 um, but anyway, but, but those, those possessions, remember God gave to us, like he gave to Adam and Eve to enjoy actually for the health and well-being of yourself and your family, yeah. you know, yeah. and, um, the material aid to give to others. So, and for, of course, the great task of proclaiming the gospel, God's work. So these are all the reasons why he gives us these wonderful things in life. And so um, we just, again, just like we lay the old man down every day, and it's a daily walk, right? It's a okay. daily... Sometimes moment by moment. moment I'll be honest. Yes, yes. Sometimes, <laughs> several times a day, truth be told. But that's just what we have to do because it's like a rewind, right? If we don't do those things, we it's slowly those things creep into our lives. So so that's what we're talking it, it, it It's all the same concept, you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lay it down every day. Take up the Jesus' cross every day, you know. Um, and that's just what we have to do. That's what we have to do as Christians. So that's yeah. what I got. Anyway, yeah. looking forward to how you're going to bring this to us. Look at you. Now. You did like you did three three minutes. You like you three Ooh. minutes extra. Okay. Hey. So, but anyway, I'll go ahead and add. time to pray at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have time to pray now. Okay, sit down. You need to sit down and listen to this one uh -oh. because get, be prepared to get uh -oh. punched in the jaw. All oh, right. No. This is this is what I said. Get my popcorn. Our, what I said in our last, I know, get your popcorn, and you'd be like, really? <laughs> yeah. All right, so is serving two masters um, really going to deal with your identity, my identity in Christ, mm. and lays it down on the line mm. and, and we gets always talk about that. all in your face? Mm -hmm. Get ready for this. So, first of all, if you believe that God will care for us, his eyes on the sparrow, right? Um, okay, that's a good thing. But if we don't believe he cares for us, what creeps in? Anxiety. What we're all getting all in your mm. face now. What's anxiety? A lack of faith in God. And I, that was, I'll say that again, a lack of faith in God. So if I'm not believing that my Savior is going to take care of my needs, my food and my clothing, then I'm not believing he's my Savior. Ouch. Ouch. Right? And uh, 
so, so this is not to say for my folks that have a chemical imbalance where they physically can't do it, where there's like a huge depression or the anxiety overwhelms them to obsessive compulsiveness or other things like that. If you have those things, please get that dealt with. Um, chemicals imbalance could mean that you need to ingest chemicals that your body isn't producing. So if you're not seeing a change and you know you prayed through, go see your doctor, right? Okay, so I'm not talking about chemical imbalances. I'm talking about you getting real with yourself to where you're going to go, am I going to do that anymore or am I not? Because you can burn out your own body's uh, adrenals. Uh, the adrenals produce the cortisol that help you with flight fright. Um, that can cause fatigue. When you burn, burn out your own, it, that goes into your hormonal system, uh, thyroid and other things, your uh, uh, pituitary, perennial gland, things like that. You can burn out your own organs by fretting, by having anxiety. And fret, the word fret means to eat up, to gradually wear away something by rubbing or gnawing. Think about a, a cow where they just chew mm -mm 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 -mm, <laughs> and they ruminate. They just sit there and chew it over and chew it over and chew it over. Um, that is going to cause a separation between you and God. Just like in the garden. Uh, God would go and walk with Adam and Eve in the cool of the evening. He would be... <laughs> He would walk with them, just like Sandy's right next to me. God would be right next to them. And once they sinned, it, there, there was a separation. He, I mean, he was still there. It says that he was there when Eve had her baby. She never, you know, whoa, what's happening here? You know, and, and God got her through it, you know. He was still there for her because uh, it says that with Seth. That she, he was there for Seth, her last baby. Um, but that connection was forever changed forever changed and let me read you I've got a lot of scripture to go through this is first Timothy 6 7 through 10 all my stuff's NIV so just know that for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it but if we have food and clothing we will be content with that Yes, be content. I was just telling Sandy, I'm, I'm like, she goes, oh, Target, good deals. And I'm like, oh, Jeanette needs to shop her own closet before I go <laughs> shopping Target. Seriously, I need to shop my own closet because I'm like, oh, I love this dress. You know, I didn't even know it was in there because I need to shop my closet, right? Okay, and continuing on. Those who want, who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money, love of money, is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. So I wanted you to, I, I said those other words, they want to get rich. They have a love of money. Um, they're eager for money. So this is more than just like, I'm going to go get me a job and provide for my family. This is like, I want a big house and two cars and I want people to respect me because I'm driving a Bentley. And I'm like, I didn't even know what a Bentley was. Apparently it's mm. a really expensive mm -hmm. car. Mm -hmm. I, because I was like, what's like on there? Maserati. Yeah, it's, you know, I mean a Maserati or Lamborghini, but a Bentley is yeah. big and it's ugly and it has this has bees it's on baby. the on the wheel on the wheel ca cap, and I'm like, what is that? Did they put glasses on it? Yeah, I didn't get it. And they're like, it's a Bentley, mom. It's it's very you know expensive. I'm like, oh, they're not impressing me because I have no idea. All right. It's, so I, I want you to see the difference because rich people get a real bad rap but there's a difference between being rich and managing your money like the good servants or being rich to flaunt it don't care about what anybody else thinks how's your relationship with your family with God that's the most important thing right if your needs are being met you know cool and if you have extra, 
that's time to give. It's time to plug into others, right? So furthering the kingdom. So we need to get our heads straight. This is a good one for that. And the parable of the talents was huge for that too. Psalm 49. Uh, this is a long one, so sit down, relax, eat your popcorn. Uh, <laughs> hear this, all you peoples. Listen all who have lived in this world, both low and high, rich and poor alike. My mouth will speak words of wisdom. The meditation of my heart will give you understanding. I will turn my ear to a proverb. With a harp, I will expound my riddle. Why should I fear when evil days come, when wicked deceivers surround me, those who trust in their wealth and boast of their riches? No one can redeem the life of another or give to God a ransom for them. The ransom for this life is costly. No payment is ever enough. So that they should live on forever and uh, so that they should not so blah, 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 and not see decay okay so basically it's like you're just trying to live a long time and you'll see actors and actresses where they've gone over so much plastic surgery their face was like pulled <laughs> like this and they've got really big lips and they don't even look human anymore right yeah. Ugh, get my face back but they're gonna die anyway you know come on we're all going I want to, I, I, I'm like, I tell my kids, I've earned every one of these because of you. <laughs> <laughs> no guilt there, right? <laughs> all right. Anyway, go on. Uh, verse 10. For we can all see that the wise die, that the foolish and sen senseless also perish, right? Leaving their wealth to others. Your stuff's going to somewhere else anyway. Yeah, probably a garage sale. Whoa, ouch, <laughs> right? Their tombs will remain their houses forever, their dwellings for endless generation, though they had named lands after them. So think about that. Think about uh, a lot of orange is named after people. You, you know, you got uh, pitches, right. you've got, uh, what's a couple of street Valencia. names? <laughs> well, yeah, Valencia, you've got, you've got a lot of names mm -hmm. around here. Those are real people. They're here, and you know what? They're they're gone. You know where? But if they if if they did it right, they're in heaven, and you know they don't care if their streets named after them. They're in heaven, and they're super happy. Let's finish it up. Uh, verse twelve. People, despite their wealth, do not endure. We're not going to be here forever, so we really need to concentrate on what's important. Mm -hmm. They we are they are like the beasts that perish. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, if you want to know just how quickly things pass, is Revelation 18, 11 through 17. Uh, it talks about the merchants on the earth will weep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargo anymore. Uh, they're talking about uh, Babylon. Uh, cargoes of gold, silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen, purple silk, scarlet cloth, and every sort of cistern wood, articles of every kind made of ivory, costly wood, bronze, iron, marble, uh, cargoes of cinnamon, spice, incense, myrrh, frankincense, wine, olive oil, and fine flour and wheat, cattle, sheep, horses, carriages, and human beings. Ooh, ouch. That people trafficking. Uh, being sold as slaves. They will say, mm -hmm. the fruit you have longed for is gone from you. All your luxury and splendor have vanished, never to be recovered. The merchants who sold these things and gained their wealth from her will stand far off, terrified at her torment. They will weep and mourn and cry out, woe, woe to you, great city, dressed in fine linen, purple, scarlet, glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. In one hour, such great wealth has been brought to ruin. Wow. Okay, Babylon, ouch. Yeah. All right, so now I'm going to go on to point two. Satan, the ruler of this world. Ouch. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 2, verse 2. In which you live in, you follow the ways of this world, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, and the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So that's Satan. All right, and then there's also 2 Corinthians um, 4, 4. 
and it says, The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. All right, so we know the unbelievers, when we go and we go out to preach and they're just like, that's fine for you, but blah, blah, blah. You know, and they always seem to have, well, what about the people who die? You know, what about this? What about the catastrophes of God love me? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and they just want to deflect because yeah. they don't want to yeah. be accountable and go, well, okay, yeah, I'll accept that gift. Just want to make excuses, possibly. Right. Anything to like mm-hmm. deflect God and to realize there's somebody, something that made them on purpose for a purpose and that they love them and they want a relationship for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's huge. And then the last one, cannot serve two masters because if you're not serving God, whether by worry or mm-hmm. striving, remember those three things I said before, passions, lust of the flesh, uh, possessions, lust of the eyes, or position your pride because don't you know who I am? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't even know what a bit me is. There you go. Then guess what? <laughs> if you're if you're going after those things, what's behind those things? Satan. That's the punch in the mouth. If you're not going after what's here, if you aren't the good servant that's striving to do the best that they can, well, guess what? You're serving yourself. You know what? It's easier to bury that talent in the dirt and go on with my merry way than to be accountable for that money that somebody gave me that I'm going to grow and flourish. It's much easier just to do my own little thing than to be accountable and and make, make some more of what I was given with the best of what I was given. Yeah, because it's hard to be accountable. It's easy to be easy. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. So, ouch, that's the punch mm-hmm. in the face. Mm-hmm. Two masters, wow. who are you serving, yeah. right? Yeah. And you only got two choices, God, yeah. Satan. Yeah, oh, yeah I good. know, ouch, get off my little soapbox, <laughs> Jeanette. You know, it's like, don't think I'm pointing at you because it's like three fingers back at me. How often do I get distracted and like, like I was just saying, oh, I need to go to Target to go to him. But I'm like, oh, wait, Jeanette, go shop your, shiny, go shop your closet. Shiny, shiny. Yeah, something shiny. <laughs> I mean, what? What? <laughs> you know. Mm. We all get like that, though. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Um, yeah, well, well, thank you. I did wow. before That's the, really good. I got 59 I seconds. Look at us. We can That's pray. That's awesome. We can. <laughs> Actually, we, remember we talked, it's good that we have some time. We can, we need to wrap this up with the verses number down here. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's start to wrap this up, you guys. Um, so back to Matthew 6, uh, verse 33. So we've talked about everything, but if you have time, please read. Matthew 6, 25 to 32, because that goes over how, you know, basically you shouldn't worry then. That basically everything we're talking about is, and it sums it up in the Bible, that you shouldn't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, where you're going to live, what you're going to wear, because basically God's going to provide that for you if you put your trust in God. Mm -hmm. And, um, but 33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these all these things shall be added unto you. Given to you. Not some. All. So therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Can we not all relate to that? Every day brings something new. Every day brings new choices, new decisions. Every day brings the chance for you to make it better. Yeah. Um, if you screwed up yesterday, don't worry about it. You know. Uh, sorry to God. Say I'm sorry, sorry and Lord. move on. Yep. Yep. Be better. Pick it up and keep moving on and make it a better day, in God's name. Mm-hmm. So that's where we're at. That is. I hope you got a lot out of it. It's very convicting. There's so much. Mm-hmm. And basically, as you all know now, things or whatever physical, spiritual, they can usurp what God originally had intended him to be separate us in your him life, in your him. heart. Yeah. Not yeah. these things. And because if we, these things come in, remember it can actually blacken your heart 
and it can actually make your eye cloudy and then you can't see anymore and you're blind. So right. that's what we're talking about. So it's time to get that shovel out and shovel everything out. Right. And get rid of that cloudiness out of your eye so your eye can be clearer again. So you can see God and hear God better. And so he can be Lord of your life and he can sit in that throne where he rightfully mm -hmm. should be. So you got this. You got this. <laughs> I know you do. Now? Yeah, thank you, God. Thank you, thank you for this uh, this study. Even though it's it's kind of tough to take, that we really have to looking at the root of the matter, looking at the what it really is all about. That it is all about you, God. And I pray that everybody watching, they choose you. And whether it's moment by moment, that we always choose you. And if we flub up, then darn it, let's you know help us get back on track and uh, choose you and be content mm -hmm. with what we have, you know, even if it's just the smile on our face, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for whoever's going to be watching today. Um, and we just so love you. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate that you loved us first and you care for us and want that relationship with us. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Name. Amen. Amen. Alrighty, so now what's left is we're going to talk about this. There's some questions for you to download um, as well if you want. That'll be about this um, topic that we're talk talking about. So just go to occc.church. You can download that study and then go back at that same occc.church. Um, Thursday morning at 7.30 a.m. and then hit the Zoom link and then you can, uh, we can all talk about live. it. live. And we would love to hear your your answers to the questions that, you know, that, yeah. that you yeah. come up with. All right, thank you. Yes, for joining mm. us. Have a great day. Take Much care, you to. guys. Yep, everybody stay come. safe. <laughs> and don't be afraid to talk to that person that right. has a question to you maybe for you about god about god mm -hmm. yep they're don't, ready don't hide your talent yep mm -hmm. come out come out for the harvest mm -hmm. all right, Oops, all right. see you thursday bye-bye bye-bye